Hi there. So in the previous video, I kind of explained the brief sort of uh, functions that BandLab can offer. But in this video, what I thought I'd do a bit different is I've kind of spent some time making a little bit of a track. And uh, from there, I'll sort of show you how how I made it. And that might give you some ideas about how you could use BandLab. So you can see there's lots of these boxes in Logic. We call them regions, which contain these have audio in because we've got audio waveforms, whereas these boxes have um, little MIDI notes essentially that we can get into. Um, but this top screen up here is a bit different. It's the drum sequencer. So I really started with this. Um, so if I click on the drum sequencer, remember you can get to that by going add track and up here and drum sequencer um, there essentially. Then if I load it up using instruments down here, I can see I've got the sequencer down there. And if I go along a bit to the end of the track, um, this track actually uses, I don't think I used a, a in the end actually, but not A, but it uses B, C, D, and E. And I used F just to finish off the end of the drum beat. So I can program lots of different beats essentially. So there's like a little breakdown bit that just uses that. Yeah, whereas there's uh, bits that are maybe a bit more complicated. Yeah, so there's lots and lots of different sort of bits here essentially, um, and lots of different patterns that you can create. And then all you need to do is just put the, this which kind of shows you where you are in time, put that where you want it, and then say if I wanted to create a new beat, like beat G, so if I just stick in some, you know, if you just click them again, they go away. Um, and you can also change some of the sounds around. So maybe I want a hand clap to go in with that. Then I can play it and listen to it. Yeah. So if I wanted that sort of beat, when I want it to come here, I just click add G. And there it goes. And I can see it there. And then I can extend it. And I've got my sort of G sequencer beat. So that's how I created the beats, essentially. And remember, you can come down here into the instrument library and pick different types of kits. So this is the drum kit. So this is acoustic, pads, this is electric. This is the electric pop kit. So, and there's lots of different sort of sounding kits in there. And another thing I think that I did is if I go down to effects down here, I've stuck on a little bit of EQ and boosted the bass to make the kit kind of hit a bit harder. And I also added a little bit of reverb. You can see it's only got 6% mix, um, just to kind of, um, you know, give it a bit of air. We've obviously got mute and solo, so I just want to listen to this for now, so I'm going to solo it. But I could have put up the reverb a little bit, maybe. You know, but then you start to really notice it too much. So, on drums, it's I just put it there to give it a bit of space. Um, anyway, so that's the drums, and then I thought, well, chords, what, what we're going to do, and I all I did is I used a C sus2 chord, so C, D, and G, that then gets held over sort of four bars, and the bass goes from a C to a B flat, essentially, and it gives you this nice sort of chord progression, quite contemporary sort of pop sort of thing, really. Um, and then I thought I'd go for kind of a quick bass idea. Now, to do this, if I go to the end here, um, I just double click on the bass part where I want the region to go. And you see it now created a new region that's empty for me where I double clicked. And then in here, I can then start double clicking to add notes. And what I noticed, if I wanted 16th notes, if I was further out, like here, I can't create them. But if you use these uh, like zoom in buttons, then I can zoom in and create much faster rhythms then because it divides up the beat much more for me. Um, so, you know, you can create a bass line by moving them around, shortening them by clicking on the end. Yeah. And a really good tip that um, I find really speeds things up is I'm holding the Alt or Option button. So if you're on a PC, it's Alt. If you're on a Mac, it's um, Option. And if you hold that button, 
before you start moving notes, do you see when I move a note, it just copies it? This really saves a lot of time if you just hold the Alt or Option button while you move notes around. Um, they actually copy, and it's a really quick way of getting notes in. So I created these really fast, this really fast sort of bass idea. Yeah, so you've got the C sus2. Now C sus2 over a B flat. Yeah, is what's going to happen. And then I went and picked, um, added new track, and I picked instrument track, essentially. And I had a look through the instruments, and I came up with for this one. I like the atmosphere pad, um, essentially. So get that down. Um, I just stuck the chords in, and again, I did it the same way. I came in and um, actually I played these in. So this is where from the previous video, you'll note that um, if you're going to play these instruments, you have to have the instrument on here. Then I can go back maybe to the beginning and hit record, but you have to touch this thing if you're gonna use the computer keyboard to input essentially um, the chords. So I just, um, there we go, so that's the notes there. Hit record, touch this, and play the notes in time. And then I double clicked on the box to kind of come in and just sort it out, you know, all nicely started at the same place and stuff. You see there's a bit of a detachment between the notes. I think I added an octave below as well in. And what it shows you here is this is the range of the instrument, so it doesn't actually make a sound down here because it's greyed out essentially, and it's grayed out over C7. Um, so you, that's why if you start putting notes down below there, it's not gonna make a sound. Um, so I created the chords, and then you could be lazy. I literally held the option or Alt key and just moved this down onto this track, and it's asking me a question about moving automation, which I won't worry about too much now, but um, I just moved it down, and then thickened up the chords with just a different sort of sound really. So we had this sound to start with. Yeah. And then this one's gonna come in. So I quite like it because this is a static kind of sound and then this sound has a little bit of movement to it, like a bit of motion sequence essentially to it. So um, they kind of complement each other really nicely. So I had um, by this point, bass and my chords and like a drum beat sort of programmed. So if we just solo these, yeah. So we've got the basic idea of the kind of harmony and rhythm and stuff like that. I thought that was getting a bit boring. I've added some other stuff. So this is like sound effects really from the loop library. So remember, I can go down here and it's got, uh, come back in there. Yes, yeah, so you've got all these different libraries of sounds that relate to different sort of genres, Sinister Trap, you know, Chicago House, Future Bass, Bollywood, all sorts of stuff essentially. And I went in and I found some sounds that I wanted to start using. So one thing that is quite common is like the vinyl acetate sort of noise essentially so that sort of crackling sort of sound um, is quite quite common I stuck that really quietly in the background at the beginning of the song and I think I found another sort of nice sound effect yeah so these are really really quiet in the background but just kind of fit out the sound a little bit really um, and then if you're a vocalist, what you could do is you could add a track and you could add a vocal track. And even if it's just a, um, like a webcam or like computer microphone, you could try using it to record some vocals. If you've got a proper interface and home mic, then brilliant. But if not, you can just do that. But I'm not much of a singer. So I just found some sort of stock electronic, and I'm not an electronic person, but stock electronic vocal parts and started putting them in essentially and working around them and there's some other effects and stuff like that here but like these things are all audio they all came out of the loop library i haven't done anything outside of band lab here um and we've got these sort of risers and stuff like that that i found so risers are really common for transitions so if i go into loops you can search and if i search for a riser 
uh, we, there's a whole actual package of rises and transitions and stuff like that. Sound effects kind of get you through different sections. Um, so that was really nice to find some in there. And there was these kind of, in the retro kind of 80s um, world, there was these amazing things for like bringing the beat back in. You know, I had a little bit of reverb to them, sound brilliant. And then these are just additional percussion. And one of the last things I wanted to show you really was the, um, down here, so I haven't found any dedicated arpeggiator in this program, but so you can program it yourself. So I came in here, and you can see I programmed all these. And what you can do, which to make things give them a bit more rhythm, is use velocity over here. So velocity is like how hard you would play the instrument. Now, if I click on it, I can increase the velocity. So I might want to do that on every uh, sort of one, two, three, four, one. So every kind of beat one, essentially. Increase the velocity. So there we go, one, two, three, four. And because it's a loop, it's going to apply that to the future iterations of it as well. Um, but I created basically an arpeggiator by just going up the chord. So I said earlier it was C, well, C, um, D, and G. So it's just an arpeggiator that just uses those notes and goes up and down in a nice sort of pattern that can repeat nicely. And that's it. So you've got this sort of. Oh. Yeah, so I mean, you could try different sounds out for it and things like that. But arpeggio is mixed in the background lightly. A really kind of, whilst it's kind of an 80s thing, it's actually quite a modern thing that a lot of modern producers do to their scores. Give them a bit of movement as well. So that's kind of it, really. And um, that's the track I came up with. I gave this little breather here where we use different drum beats and see them switching around. Um, make sure you experiment with effects. So again, on the vocal thing, I think I put some reverb on it. And um, we could like with the bass, push the bass a little bit if we wanted to and stuff like that. Um, so make sure you're kind of experimenting around with the effects. Now, one thing um, that is quite useful is this automation uh, button here. If you actually press the A key, like in Logic, um, opens the automation screen. Um, so it looks like this, uh, essentially. So you've got all these lines. And basically, did you notice when, if I solo these chords, they come in slowly? Yeah, so that's because this is um, got automation on it, and it's a volume automation, and it's going from minus infinity dB, so basically uh, silence, up until uh, oh, what's this? Oh, kind of look like, uh, minus six dB, so minus six off of zero. So we can also do panning, so I could pan this from side to side, from left to right if I wanted to. Um, but I can create volume increases like this as well. And I can also just um, change the volume of tracks for like uh, where I'm putting different effects so I can just change or different sounds, I can change the volumes essentially. And like that arpeggiator, it actually gets louder than quieter, louder than quieter. So there's a little bit of movement to it um, essentially. So we could do this with our drums. We could have our drums kind of come in quieter and build up, you know? We uh, don't. Maybe all the way to oh, don't want to do that. So if you do something that you don't want to do, you can use Command Z or we've got the undo button up there, which is quite useful. So um, let's put that in that and pull that down a little bit. So we could do the same with the bass here to give it a nice sort of gentle coming up in volume. So you probably notice as well, I'm getting quite a lot of uh, noise and things like that when I play stuff, but when you actually bounce this down, you don't get that. I think it's just because this is all online, accessing quite a lot of data and things like that to make this work. But you can see I've got quite a lot of tracks and it's all 
working nicely, not crashed once on me and things like that essentially. Um, so make sure you use use of the loop library, have a look see what you can find in there. Um, try programming notes using kind of set creating instruments by creating new tracks, pick instrument sounds and then just double click on here where you want it to go and start a region like that. So double click here and start double clicking to put notes in essentially and um, play around with the drum sequencer and really see what you can build. I think I was quite surprised actually how how good you could start sounding with not a lot of effort really quickly with this. Um, so yeah, so see if you can make a really, really awesome track. And if you make something really cool, send it through to us. I'm gonna try and make this track available so you can access it and have a look at it as well. Um, anyway, I'll do a quick playthrough so you can hear what it sounds like. So once you've finished your track, what you're going to want to do is get it out as an MP3 or an audio file, aren't you? So once you've finished it all, if you go up here to File and Download, um, if you click on Tracks, it allows you to get stems, which are like the individual tracks. But if you go Mix Down, it takes the whole track and mixes it down. And then basically from here, you can click on what type of quality you want. So MP3 is compressed, so you're going to lose quality. Um, but obviously WAV files are much much larger essentially um, so if you're going to share it on the internet or um, put it on your phone things like that mp3 is probably fine but if you're going to burn it onto cd um, or use it for like a commercial project of some sort you're probably going to want wave so once you've decided just hit download once you've selected the version you want basically um, and then after that it's going to basically convert your file and download it for you onto your computer now, one really cool thing that FamLab offer is once you've done that, um, you can actually go get it mastered. So if you put into Google FamLab mastering and go to FamLab.com and mastering, essentially, um, so you see uh, this website here allows you to then drop your track in. So if I get my original track, drop it in, it analyzes it. Right, and then you can choose between sort of different mastering types. I mean, these are just templates, um, but it does seem to make it sound a bit better. So here's the original, and then we can enhance the clarity, boost the bass, CD quality, yeah? I really like the enhanced clarity one, it's really good. It does what I often like doing anyway when I master something, in terms of just pulling out the, the higher frequencies gives it that sort of extra sparkle. So this is a really, really cool tip. So once you've um, mastered, or not mastered, once you've finished a track and you've gone file, download as, mix down as, to get like an MP3 of it or a WAV file, stick it into the mastering thing and just try it and see if you think these sound a little bit better. Once you've done, you go get your master and then it takes you to a screen where you can download it basically. So that's a really, really cool thing just to make your music sound better really quickly.